What's Morales Black from TV? Hello, folks. Hello. <laughs> now, a lot has, has obviously changed, you know, since you started shooting this. And to me, I want to ask you guys coming into this, obviously, you know that as they kept going, new characters were going to come on board. What led you to take on these characters? Jonathan? Well, I, it's, um, I've been a fan of the series from day one. And um, yeah, I, I secretly, I'd been hoping that they'd uh, asked me to play Prince Philip when he got to be the right age. And um, when they asked me, I already knew that uh, Imelda had been cast. So that was uh, 50%, 50%, 50% more, do. maybe no, 50% of the attraction, fine. 75%. <laughs> all right, 80. it was 100% of the attraction was to work with Imelda. Mm -hmm. um, and it is such <laughs> 30 I would call 30 it. yeah thanks yeah. it's um it's I and I've not regretted that decision for one minute it's uh it's been wonderful to work on <laughs> Imelda you know obviously this year is a big year and obviously we saw what just happened in recent events what's your take on playing this character before and after this year <laughs> well of course uh, season five which what people will be seeing we finished filming that six months ago and we're now filming season six and we started filming on the Wednesday and the Queen died on Thursday. So it was a bit of a roller coaster the first few weeks for all of us. Um, we stopped filming in my schedule. I had time off, which I was very grateful for. And I was um, extremely upset uh, and more upset than I expected. Uh, and maybe that's to do with being with her for two and a half years, really. Um, and, but in terms of the difference, there isn't much difference. There's sadness, but that's a personal thing, not a professional thing. Uh, and we're, we're carrying on and, um, and Peter Morgan, the writer, of course, has huge affection for the Queen, for the family. Otherwise he wouldn't have been writing about these people for the last 15, 20 years, uh, if you count Helen Mirren's film and onwards. So um, we're, hopefully with great respect just carrying on and delivering his work but of course if anything it's how the it's less the effect it has on us but the effect it will have on the audience and they'll be viewing it through those completely different eyes now and they'll i think they will get great comfort from it those who need comfort the, from the passing of the queen and uh, they will see great empathy and sympathy for the queen uh, at at a very tumultuous time in her life. Each of you, is there anything new that you learned, you know, outside of the script, outside of playing this role, outside of the deep dive you did before, you know, as you was, you know, doing production and outside since their deaths, there's been so much written about them. You know, obviously one died a year after the other. And, you know, you see all the news, you see the magazine covers and, you know, everybody's wrapping up these stories. Is there anything new that you're still learning? Well, I think the when Philip Philip died after we'd finished uh, season five, and um, I, I yes, I what what worried me was the audience would learn much more about the prince than they knew before. The the documentaries that were shown and the interviews with members of the family. I wanted to be the one <laughs> that was telling them what Philip was really like. And um, the documentaries were doing my work for me. So there was a little bit of a regret there. Yes, well, exactly the same for me. I was watching, you know, the, for the 10 days of the morning, everyone was looking at my research. Yeah. So yeah. I was a little bit um, peeved about that. <laughs> but, but then remember that Peter Morgan has, has written us, um, his imagination, just, you know, describing their emotional reaction to various situations. These are real events, but with drama, uh, you know, linked in with all those events. <laughs> and, um, and that's wonderful to play. Two seasons will be great watching you guys. Keep it up, take care of yourselves, have a great day. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Hello, Wilson Ross from Black Women TV. How's it going? Good, thank you. A lot has transpired since the last season, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so coming into this, obviously you're playing Princess Margaret. So, you know, what led you to say, take on, you know, this role, knowing that they were going to do more seasons and then you get the call to play this role? 
Well, I knew it was going to be two seasons because that's the format. Every two seasons they change the the actors playing the, the royal family because they're getting older. Um, well, I mean, you've only got to watch seasons one to four of The Crown to see that the crucial thing for me is the writing. The writing is so rich and wonderful and the, every aspect of the filming, the lighting, the cameras, the design, the costumes, the hair and makeup, it's all real, real top of the shelf stuff. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant things are going on. Um, so why wouldn't you, why would I not want to play Margaret? I mean, she's an extraordinary character, um, a rich, wonderful woman to try to get to uh, understand and depict. Um, you know, that is my job, but, you know, some characters are more interesting than others, and she's certainly up there with uh, one of the ones who's who's more interesting. I mean, she's just great. Mm -hmm. How much of a deep dive did you do outside of the script and from what you've seen in previous seasons? Well, I, I, I knew I was going to be playing her for almost two years before we started, so time was on my side, so I read a lot of the books that were available and watched footage and documentaries and listened to her, which was my main source, really. But you have to do all that research, hope that it's done its job, and then in a way forget about it, because then what you're doing is the script that Peter Morgan's written. Uh, and that in, that in, involves my um, interpretation, my take on her and how am I going to play her? Um, and that's a very personal thing that's very hard to analyze in a way because you know, a lot of it is um, you do the homework, but then you trust your instinct sort of thing. And of course, I'd watched the, the, the earlier seasons anyway, but I rewatched them because why wouldn't you? I mean, there's, uh, but my job certainly isn't to mimic in any way what the previous actresses did. I mean, they're playing her in a different time, but you know, they certainly set the bar very high and they certainly both created, um, uh, sowed the seeds for the tempestuous, difficult, complex, funny Margaret that we know she was. You just mentioned the word mimic. And then the thing I'm saying, thinking is because there have been previous people playing her, you know, is there someone there, as you watched it as well, to keep the mannerisms in place so it doesn't look like a total departure from the previous person? And, and then after you answer that, what's your take after you've now played her? Do you have a better insight as to who you play, knowing that she's still living? Well, you, you, we, do have, um, uh, we do have a group of people helping us to create the characters. So therefore, hopefully, there is some uniformity with things like accent and voice and the level of um, um, uh, the degree to which they they sound very aristocratic you know the way they move and we have people helping us with that so and they've worked on the other seasons so hopefully there's a there's a kind of uh, a uniformity with with all of that um, and what was the second oh, what do I feel about her now that I've played her <coughs> Well, yes. you know, she's, she's, I always knew she was complicated and I never really envied the life that she'd had. Um, I think she was in a way born at the wrong time. I think if she'd have been born 20, 30 years later, uh, her life might have gone in, in a different direction. Um, I feel, I feel quite, um, sad for margaret actually and that's the truth i don't i don't i'm not talking about you know of course there are many people in the world to feel sad for and i do genuinely feel sad for and i don't mean that you know because this here is a woman who had privilege and money and was never had to deal with any of those problems that too many people have to deal with in the world but i feel sorry for her heart and i think that that's a universal um feeling of uh, sadness that you can have for somebody, mm -hmm. however privileged they are. Yes, and just to correct myself, she had passed away. As <laughs> I said, course, I had said living, but passed I away. I know. But, yeah, no, she yes, passed yes. away in 2002. Yeah. Yes. Congratulations. We'll be keening in two seasons. Keep it going. Take care. Will. <laughs> Thank you.